from two inches deep, just kind of scraping the surface. We remove the rocks and the weeds, and then we build right on top of it. Okay. Now, for a plant to get through, for a weed to get through that box, it's possible that I don't... Okay, so there's a weed, all right? And you have to kind of look for them, but they're in there. But you notice the whole it's, thing isn't Yeah, isn't and the full of soil weed. is so soft and has such water in it, all you have to do is just go use your finger and thumb and just pluck it, and they that's just right. come right just out. Pick that right up. Yeah. Because they're so shallow. I don't know. That's what I've noticed when I've used sawdust and stuff is that it's so shallow rooted because it has all the water it needs. It doesn't need to mine down to China to get food and water. It's, so all you have to do is just go pluck. Right. And so by building out, a, by following the, every step in the Mitt Lottie Gardening Course book, using two by eights, treated lumber that will last for decades, filling with inexpensive soil, uh, uh, treating the, the ground first by removing the rocks and the weeds, we don't have a weed problem. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that the plants grow so full that it it, they block out they weeds block anyway, out don't the, they? they? They block out the lights, which uh, thwarts the weeds from growing. These are beautiful. So what I've noticed is that the midlighter method is more of a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And if you, if and everything fits together. And so I don't, I don't understand why everything is the way it is, but I've learned to do everything that it the works. way it is. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to succeed like thousands of others, very successful mid lighted gardeners, I have to follow the exact same steps that they're following. Right. And it's a, it's, it's a system, it's a puzzle, put the pieces together and you end up with a great garden. Well, and you've added the geothermal in on top of that. Which is the second law of plant growth, which is controlling the temperature. Yeah. Because I haven't seen, I haven't seen this level of greenhouse with the mitt lighter. Have they changed it since then? Because the old one, they had like these T-posts and a little bit of plastic that went over it, but it wasn't as comprehensive as, as comprehensive as like your two layers of plastic with the forced air and then the geothermal in the bottom. Well, uh, uh, whether it's an in the garden greenhouse using the T-posts, whether it's the arches like we showed outside with the corn and the other vegetables, or whether it's a greenhouse, the whole purpose is to help control the temperature. So they all, that's the whole purpose. Okay. Now, since we have longer winters here than in Texas and colder winters here than in Texas, I wanted to find a way that I could grow year round like I did in Texas. Right. The way, the easiest way for me to do that and the most enjoyable way is to get out of the weather into a structure that um, uses very little energy to keep it warm during the winter. And that's why you went with the geo air tunnel. Well, and that's why what you just said about getting out of the weather, they have all these books out there about cold frame gardening, gardening in cold frames, and I've done that before, just the cold frame where you lift the door up, but if it's 30 below outside and you've got snow and wind coming in down the back of your neck, the odds of me going out and checking and wanting to harvest anything out of that cold frame, I'm not going to yeah. because I can't get the snow off. Also, I have to go out and lift the lid up if it gets too warm and put a brace there right. so that it doesn't overheat in the middle of winter. So it's agonizingly time consuming, mind numbingly busy. Right. And it's miserable to be out in it, whereas this in the winter would be a joy to be out in. Exactly. And if you don't adjust for your environment, you're, you're going to fail just because it's a miserable activity. Right. Let's go out here. So having having the GeoAir tunnel is like the most enjoyable way to garden during winter. However, simply having these arches over these plants. This, you know, they say here in Idaho, knee high by the 4th of July, right? Right. Okay. It's June 2nd. <laughs> These were planted yeah. out here in March. Yeah. It, it, for most corn, it hasn't quite sprouted yet. Right. They just put seed in. Yeah. And so what I did is I, using the system that Jacob has developed with the mid ladder method, I germinated these inside. Then when they were about this tall, I planted them outside, covered them with inexpensive greenhouse plastic. When it gets above 50 degrees outside, I simply open the ends, let the air through, 
when it gets above 70 degrees, I take the plastic all the way off. Of course, in, in uh, March, it wasn't above 70. Right. Right. So I was, it was cold. opening up the ends. Right. Um, but you can greatly extend your gardening season um, by simply using a very simple uh, mini uh, greenhouse yeah. or A frame, whatever you want to call it, low tunnel. You could probably extend your growing season a month and a half. On the, in the spring and a month and a half in the fall, which is huge. That's if you have a extra month, yeah, if you have a market huge. garden and you're trying to sell to people, you would have something before anybody else had anything. Right. So our season here is um, June, July, August, September. Uh huh. That's four months. Yeah. If you could add March, half of February, March, April, September, October, November. Yeah. Because you still have warm days, in, at least in this area, you still have warm days in November. It's very similar to October in November, except that you get the hard freezes at night. Right. But you still have lots of nice weather during the day. Right. So if you needed to, you could add um, a little space heater in here if you wanted to, some light bulbs to keep the frost off of it. But we could take these out here in September and plant cabbages or whatever else mm -hmm. inside of here and be growing several more months into the uh, into winter. And you're using the same feed out here as you are in your greenhouse? Yes, we're using the same Mint Lighter Weekly uh, feed. Yep, so today I will walk down these rows and add the nutrients, turn on the hose and let everything dissolve. It's amazing. That's really incredible. So you can see it doesn't make any difference whether you're growing in custom soil like sawdust and sand or this wonderful soil we have here you know, right? In this clay, <laughs> you can see this is. This it is just what, goes hard packed so fast. This is what happened from last night's rain. Yeah, it is. I mean, but look at these plants. They're, they're great. So it doesn't make any difference what the soil is. If you water them, give them light, control the temperature, feed them, they'll grow. So maybe a good investment would be for those of you who really want to be making, uh, a, at least a big niche in your uh, food. Let, al let alone growing the way that David does, where he produces all of his own produce. Having that book, even just researching it and reading it, even if you don't decide to do it, I think it would be a real big step in understanding real food production as opposed to hobby gardening. Right. And I tell people, I'm not a hobby gardener. I grow food as right. if my life depends on it. And right. I am dead serious about that. That's why I have five years of nutrients stored. That's why I have over 200,000 seeds in my storage. Yeah. That's why I'm using the Mintlight Gardening Method because I haven't found another one that will do everything that this does. Well, and it's less intensive. It's like you could hobby garden and do it the hard way that gets poor results, or you could do it this easy way that gets food for the whole year. How much does that save you in your grocery bill? I mean... Well, the other day we had a family uh, dinner here. We had 12 people for dinner. Uh, I was with my wife, we were doing errands. She provided the whole meal. She said, I need to stop at the grocery store. She spent $7. Yeah. And I forgot to bring you your goat's milk. It's on my counter at home. Yeah. I totally spaced it. I'm sorry, I had it all ready. I can't forget this, I can't forget this, and then I forgot it. I told my wife, I said, we, we get goat's milk tomorrow. So next time we come through, I will drop you off a gallon. Yeah. I'm okay. so sorry. No problem. So this is what you get when you follow the recipe, and everybody can get the same thing. So if you're struggling with the recipe, right. call me. Right? <laughs> All right, come by the garden, take a look, ask questions. We have people over, someone just pulled up, okay? They're here, that's my next appointment of the day. Mm -hmm. We have people over here all the time. Glad to do it, I'm simply paying it forward. And, and I think that's really what it feels like. It's, it, especially in this area, people really are trying and wanting to be self-reliant, but all they have is the food storage in their closet. They don't have something that actually gives vitality to your life. Right. It, you can't live on wheat alone if you want to have really good bowel movements or one thing that are important in an emergency situation. Right. You don't want to be just living on grain. Well, if you want to really extend your food storage, have a garden. Yeah. It well, makes a big difference. And it improves your health because you're up and down, you're moving, your intestines get moved because you're crouching down or you're standing up and you're walking and you don't have all the pesticides and chemicals from what you're getting in the store that wasn't ripe. Right. So I think the vegetables and the fruits in the grocery store 
are designed to make people not like vegetables they and fruits. They are, because they're like eating a piece of styrofoam. I had some a couple over here uh, two weeks ago, and I said, do you guys like green beans? And they both said no. no. I said, do me a favor, just try these. And, they and they're both, sweet. Yes. Yeah. And they both said, wow, those won't taste anything like the green beans in the grocery store. They don't. Well, and they have mold on them. Yeah, anything you get at the grocery store, you have to be so careful to wash off because the time it took for it to get here was enough time for it to have molded right. and mildewed. And so you have a very short window of time to get it cooked before it really goes bad. Right. No one's going to treat your kids as good as you do. Right. And no one's going to grow your food as good as you do. Right. So if you don't grow it, you don't know it. Yeah. So just grow it. And yeah. you can control the availability, the, the price, and the quality. Mm -hmm. And in, I, I don't know, I can't get past the lifestyle thing. If you have something like this in the winter to go out and play and to get your sunshine, yeah. are you going to be sad and mopey and feel like you're stuck in your house? No. It's actually, the, the geo air tunnel is actually warmer than our house in winter. I bet it is. So I come out here, my wife uh, is in the house, I'm out here, and it's just wonderful. And it's happiness. Yeah. I think it's fantastic, and thank you. Thank you. I will let you get on to your next. <laughs>